Hello and welcome everyone to LinkedIn for Real Estate and Commercial Property Professionals. My name is Sue Elson. I'm an independent LinkedIn specialist, author, educator and practitioner and I really encourage you to be as active as possible in this webinar and if you're listening to the recording, uh, please take lots of notes. There's going to be heaps of information in this presentation that I'm sure you'll find helpful. I'm going to be running through the top 10 techniques for real estate professionals and commercial property professionals and top ways to use LinkedIn, top ways to manage your LinkedIn activity in 20 minutes a week. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure you've got the LinkedIn app on your mobile phone so that uh, I can show you how to connect with people. That's going to be particularly useful for opens when you're out and about with people. No need to take your business cards anymore. You can just connect with people on your mobile phone, which is even better. And of course, it happens instantly. It doesn't look creepy if you follow up with them later, all that kind of thing. And I actually have been in real estate uh, back in 2011. I spent just over six months in the industry. And obviously, I've, I've had lots of interactions with real estate agents over the years. And I've been clients. And so yeah, lots of information that I can share. But to start with, for turning up, for listening to the recording, I love to give you something just for showing up. And everybody who attends live, I will automatically email you these resources. Uh, for those of you who are listening to the recording, you can just click on that link for the latest offer. I'm also running a LinkedIn workshop here in Melbourne on Saturday, the 20th of May, live and in person. Two people have already booked in. There's only two other spots available. So if you'd like to join me for that, we can actually do the updates in live and in real time. And with a couple of other interested people, uh, you're most welcome to do that as well. Um, and likewise, I would like to encourage you to follow me on social media. So if you haven't already, I'm going to pop these links in the chat. Um, you can just click on those and follow me on the various social media and um, yeah that would be really fantastic I'm aiming for 1,000 YouTube subscribers um, I got to 100 videos on YouTube this week and I've got 200 subscribers so uh, yeah let's see if I can keep up my number of videos with the number of subscribers uh, because I'm going to be doing a lot more short form content in the future. For those of you who don't know, I've written and published five books. My latest one is second on LinkedIn, LinkedIn for me and my career or business, which is designed for you to kind of turn the page and do the updates directly yourself. You can order that from my website or via uh, my publishing website, 120wayspublishing.com. And for those of you who also don't know me, I'm a member of several associations, Melbourne Press Club since 2008, Career Development Association of Australia 2015, Australian Society of Authors, Writers Victoria, Small Press Network, and most recently Educate Plus, which is for advancement professionals working in independent schools, which I've done a lot of work with schools over the years. Um, and then there's my website. So I started my career at Westpac. Uh, 11 years in Adelaide and moved to Melbourne in 1994. Haven't had a real job since, but I would definitely like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're all based. This presentation is for people of all backgrounds, uh, regardless of how you've come to be in this spot at this time. And it's not professional advice for your personal circumstances. It is general knowledge. So if you'd like personal advice, um, you'll need to reach out to me directly for that. Um, the slides and the video recording link will be online. The slides are already there. If you want to download them and follow along, you're most welcome to do that. There's no need to turn your video camera on. I'm not one of those people who says you must have your video on to prove that you're listening. I know that we're all busy and boy, on a cold Melbourne day like today, isn't it nice to be warm and toasty inside? Um, I'm going to assume there is a varied level of knowledge of LinkedIn, uh, although a lot of people think once they've got a LinkedIn profile, they're done. Well, I'm here to tell you there's a lot more you can do and I really encourage you to pop your questions in the chat at any time. Um, if you want to message me directly, you can just choose to sue and I won't announce your name. If you want the question visible to everyone, that's fine as well. And I would really appreciate if you let me know what is most helpful to you and also if you can find a way to say thank you. Now, I've recently joined Bing because I've got a Microsoft computer 
and it's using chat GPT and it looks for reviews and it looks for Facebook reviews. So if you're on Facebook and you have a moment to write me a review, I will be eternally grateful. I've only got three on there at the moment and I've got 130 on Google. So uh, I've got a lot of catching up to do. So if you are on Facebook and you have just a few quick moments, I would really appreciate it. So um, this presentation is specifically designed for real estate and commercial property professionals, but it does include a lot of information that I've used in other presentations. So that's why I'm going to be starting off with some very specific examples. Everything I do, I know many of you are in sales and, you know, sales is what it's all about, but I do believe in being ethical, respectful, using networking techniques, being uh, very conscious of the way we do business online because it can affect us if we do things the wrong way. And obviously my goal is to help you as individuals, but also the organizations where you work. So just to get a little bit of engagement, I'd love for you to mention what your current role is. So two letters I need you to pop in the chat. One, if you're mostly in residential sales, uh, would be an S. Um, P, if you're mostly in property management, C, if you're mostly in commercial property, A, if you're advising people in the industry or you're a support to people in the industry. I know we've got a plumber who's booked for, to come today and other, you know, you're just in some other general field, uh, not necessarily related to real estate or commercial property. And also if you're in Australia or overseas, and this will just give me a bit of a clue as to which directions to focus the presentation on. So if you can just pop those two letters in the chat. Um, that would be really, really helpful. We've got anybody willing to engage or you're all just listening silently? Uh, okay, I've got Vincent who's advising people. Mike is in construction. Cool. In Australia, Vincent um, is in Australia. Julie's a buyer's agent and coach in Sydney. Melissa is advising in Melbourne. Fantastic. It's really great. Fabulous to have you here. Please throw me any LinkedIn questions you've got. Uh, Pauline, she's a SaaS platform. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, I presume that's specifically for the real estate industry. So um, one thing I always say to people who are considering a SaaS platform is, how many integrations does it have? That's the number one thing I determine as to whether I purchase a SaaS platform. Um, so, yeah, let us know, Pauline. We'd be really interested. And put, feel free to put a link in the chat as well. Uh, more than happy for you to be networking with one another, to chatting with one another in the chat. It's all good. Uh, Property.inc. Wow, sounds fantastic. Well done. Uh, okay. Um, oh, and by the way, I was... Um, uh, I put up a post because there was an American who said that things need to change in the area of mental health. I know that's completely unrelated to this webinar. And I said, oh, here in Australia, we've got a mental health first aid course. And um, apparently they don't have one in the US. So, you know, Australia, we're leading the way in many little things beyond the rotary clothesline and the Victor lawnmower and audio bionic ears, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So extra resources that are available to you. This is my 20th LinkedIn Insight webinar series. So you're welcome to go back and watch any of them. But I have decided it's going to be the last one in this format. Oh, the collective audience goes. Now, these started in the middle of COVID when obviously online meetings were all the thing. Uh, but life has pretty much returned to normal. And who wants to sit through an hour long webinar? Well, hopefully you guys do, because uh, there's going to be lots of information here. But I've decided that short form content is where I'm going to go. The, the rate of change with chat GPT and artificial intelligence, machine learning, all that kind of stuff means that our attention spans are decreasing. And I really want to be able to give people information in the way that suits them the best. So I'm moving to short form content, but all the recordings from the previous ones are available. Uh, in September last year, I started appearing on Channel 9 as a career expert. I've now appeared eight times on television and I've got videos. And as I said, if you want to download the slides, um, you can go there. So specific tips. Now, these are I've sort of drilled into my brain of, you know, what, what's really important. And from now on, I really want you to connect with everyone you meet on LinkedIn. It is so important. People change their phone numbers, their email addresses, their job location, their country location. 
But if you connect with them on LinkedIn, you'll still be able to message them. And even very senior executives, you can obviously message on LinkedIn, which you may not be able to get through the, the chain of command if you were trying to go directly to through the organisation. You do also need to set a good example for your colleagues. You can't say, oh, you should update your LinkedIn profile, but you haven't updated your own. And you've got to remember that you really need to meet people several times before they will become a client. You can keep your relationships going over the longer term. I've been online since 2001, so many people can't believe that I'm still here, still plugging away, doing lots of different things and loving it. Um, you do need to abide by any specific requirements for your profession. So some people that you meet, say they're a psychologist, for example, they might not connect with you uh, for professional reasons. So just keep that in mind. Don't be too upset if somebody declines an invitation. But LinkedIn at the end of the day is one huge database. And I joined on the 21st of December 2003. On the 5th of May, LinkedIn celebrated its 20th birthday. I'm member number 77832, one of the first 80,000 people in the world on the platform and have been consulting on it since 2008. So it is a network. It helps you maintain relationships, find leads, follow up and say thank you. So you can write recommendations for people and boy, not many people do. So if you start doing that, uh, that will be good and hopefully some of them will write recommendations for you as well. Now, the old school was keep all your cards close to your chest, don't show anybody any information, and you will, you know, earn the king's ransom. But nowadays, with technology, if you don't share your information, you'll be invisible, nobody will see you, and it's much harder to convince people to purchase. So if you don't tell them that you achieve a 99% sales rate, uh, you know, 10% over a predicted um, sale price, whatever it is, these are really fantastic statistics. It's not bragging, talking about them. Obviously, you can't say we sold X property at X price if the vendor has decided they do not want that to be revealed, but you could say it was 20% over the listed price or whatever. We've got to be careful on that one, but, you know, expectations, uh, the, the price range, obviously all those kind of things. So it could have been you did a really fantastic marketing campaign and you ended up with three potential purchases and that took the price way beyond expectations. So yeah, obviously I don't want any underquoting. I'm not promoting that, but uh, definitely if you've got some great results, fantastic to share those, provided they're not commercially sensitive. Um, also, there's lots of different things you can do on LinkedIn. It's not just about the news feed. I think you can forget groups. They're pretty much dead in the water. But articles and newsletters can be really good. Video content can be great. And there's lots of other bits and bobs. You can also connect to people locally and internationally. So say you speak a different language and you know real estate agents in another country that speak the same language, that can be very helpful so that whenever they're looking for somebody in Australia or your current location that needs those services, then that can be helpful. They can reach out to you. And please discuss your expertise in words that other people understand. Now, when I first got into real estate and they said, oh, it's a three better, I'm thinking, what the hell is they talking about when it's a three bedroom property? So just be aware of some of the little words that you use. Opens, well, I always thought it was an open for inspection. And I know it's sort of really basic stuff, but if somebody was looking for somebody to do an auction and you mentioned um, some other word, auctioneer, they might not find you. So just keep those keywords in mind when you're writing your content as well. So quick stories from my experience. Your digital competency. So when I joined a small real estate firm in Camberwell here in Melbourne back in 2011, I had digital skills and nobody in the organisation at that stage had digital skills. So what I did was I went around to all the little networking groups in the local area to find some networking groups that would be most suitable for me as a real estate professional to be involved in. And the one I chose in the end to support was the local traders association because the traders are the individuals running retail businesses in the local area who are, in theory, servicing all the local people. 
And that was very successful. I helped them set up a business professionals network. Then I started running presentations on social media for the professional network, as well as for the local council. And who would I use as my example? The real estate agency. So I was able to use my skills to promote the business, but educate people at the same time. So, you know, this was a technique that I used, but also if you are seen as not up to date with technology, like having a profile says you're digitally literate, it doesn't show that you're competent. So if you take on these steps, you can show that. You definitely need to maintain relationships with your referral sources. There's a reason why some people are in real estate for 30 years. It's because they've built relationships and they keep getting referrals. So if you connect with everyone you meet and they liked you when they met you, they're more likely if they keep seeing you put content out on a regular basis to remember when they need you, they want someone like you. So it's a really great way to remind them that you exist. And the other thing that I did with all of the content, so I created a blog for this real estate agency, and we decided that we would focus on the local council area, the city of Burundara. So I looked up all the suburbs of this area because Google search results, Bing search results, the number one query is location. So we put the suburb names for all of the local area on every page of the blog, on the newsletter we created. We had a printed newsletter. We had a digital newsletter. All these suburb names were mentioned everywhere. So don't forget to put the suburb names on your LinkedIn profile as well, because if I'm standing here in Canterbury and I'm looking for a hairdresser, it's not going to give me a result from Sydney. It's going to give me a result from Canterbury here in Melbourne. So putting those suburb names on all of your content wherever you can is really, really helpful. Now, that's not to say we didn't sell properties outside of the city of Burundara. We did some in South Yarra and Paran and Richmond. And we had some, you know, on, on the edges of these suburbs, but it meant that journalists started calling us for any information on when uh, Camberwell train station was going to be moved. We got called for comment. You know, it was really, really helpful. So think about the locations of the area you service and pop them on all your content whenever you can. I also encourage you to connect with your peers and even competitors. So another one of my clients uh, is a buyer's agent. And during lockdown here in Melbourne, she couldn't inspect properties. And so she had good relationships with other real estate agents in those local areas who could travel that 5K radius. So they all did swaps and you know, people in that suburb would do opens and inspections for one agency and she would do them for, for people who had properties in her area. So it's really good. Now, obviously, we all know some of our competitors are bits of thorns in our side and others we love to know about and trust, but it's nice to be nice online all the time, regardless of how you think about these people in real life. I always maintain professional standards uh, wherever I go. Um, it's not bragging to discuss your achievements unless you use too many adjectives. I mean, if you say you are the best person in real estate ever in this suburb, that could be a little bit of a stretch. So just talk to actually what you've achieved. And remember that you need to support the buyer and the seller, as well as the tenant and the landlord. You're servicing, you know, I sometimes think that real estate and commercial property is really um a conflict of interest because you, you're trying to help the seller purchase seller sell and you're trying to help the buyer buy and at the end of the day you need a sale like you know it, it feels like I'm an ex-banker it feels like a conflict of interest but don't forget that the buyer could then become a seller in the future so we need to maintain all of these relationships in a as respectful way as possible and not just be thinking about the sale or the management or the lease or whatever it is and I am here to tell you as much as I love LinkedIn and all the things I do online, I keep showing up in person. So last night I was at a local council event. It was on marketing and videos. Uh, did I know nearly all of the information at the event that was shared? Yes. But did I reconnect and meet new people? Absolutely. And that's really good for me because I work from home and I don't have a bunch of people around me all the time. It makes me feel connected, but it also backs up my online story. So I go to as many local events that are as relevant 
to me as possible so that I keep being known. And when I was part of this real estate agency, um, my supervisor was a member of a networking group that he attended every single week. And he only needed like three deals a year to cover the cost of turning up at that networking event. And it was early in the morning, so it wouldn't affect any opens or other transactions. So it proved to be very beneficial because he has a high ticket sale price. So don't be afraid to make a commitment to showing up in person because people still do business with people. I mean, you could have the best digital presence, the best social media, the most viral videos and still not get any work. And I can prove this from the point of view that, as I said, I've now appeared on television eight times. Has anybody rung me up and said, oh, Sue, I saw you on the television. I'd like to book an appointment. No, my work still comes from all the other things that I do, but the television appearances are helping me maintain my relationship with those people and I'm still getting a steady stream of clients. So why should you even bother with LinkedIn? Please don't forget, ask questions in the chat. I really love it when it's interactive and there's some extra things happening. So why should you bother with LinkedIn? Well, you're going to be Googled. I mean, if I hear that you're a fabulous representative of whatever it is that you do, even from my best friend, I'm still going to Google you. And 75% of people will Google you before a job interview, if you're thinking about changing jobs, and 95% before you get offered a job. So keep that in mind. And I work with a lot of top executives at the top of the tree, and I recommend that you all have your own website in yourname.com. And I did this for a real estate agent oh, at least 10 years ago now, Sadly, her name changed, which was a bit of an issue, but um, it was extremely helpful to her. And it meant that she could share her content on her own website. So regardless of which agency she, she was a part of, there was still that full portfolio of all the things that she had shared on her own website. So I definitely recommend it. Now, I'm not going to force you into anything like that. And I've only had mine since 2012 when my first website went online in 2001. So even for myself, I was a little bit late to the game. But the benefit is you can put whatever you want on your own website. But on LinkedIn, you can only sort of fill in the boxes. Now, LinkedIn has gone up to 930 million members worldwide in over 200 countries. Uh, it's now gone up to 12.6 million members here in Australia. That's gone up by 200,000 in the last couple of months. I mean, it's amazing. And the highest number of people there are between the ages of 25 and 34. That's 59%. And let me assure you, after you've listened to today's presentation, you'll be able to say they didn't do that on their profile, they need to fix this, and you'll be able to look at their profiles entirely different. And likewise, I worked at Westpac for 11 years, I needed to move to Melbourne. Could they transfer me? No, I lost my job. When I got here, I got a job, found out I was pregnant, got sacked when I was pregnant. No job is forever and we need to build our network. I had a tax accountant who told me one year that I needed to increase my income before the 30th of June and he said to contact a few of my clients and ask them if they would prepay me. So one client, and I didn't tell them an amount, I just said, this is what my accountant has suggested, are you happy to pay me in advance for work I'm prepared to do for you? One client gave me $750, no questions asked. One gave me $2,200 and another one gave me $5,500 without me having done any of the work yet. I mean, I could have been hit by a Melbourne tram the next day and they would have lost the money, but I still got given um, that money. So that's the value of a network and please do not underestimate it. And I only asked three people and all three people gave me money. So, yeah, really important. Okay, what are the top 10 techniques? Well, you need to fill out your profile in detail. And if you look at mine, you'll think it's War and Peace, you know, another version of a very famous lengthy novel. But it's there for a reason. And I get search results. So before I do that, when I work with a client, what I will do is get them to download their data. So from your me menu, you can choose settings and privacy and you choose data privacy and you can choose get a copy of your data. And I recommend you do this at least every three months in the unlikely event that you do something naughty on LinkedIn and they delete your profile, but also as a great backup. 
and you can request it. Now, when you request it, they'll send you an, an email for the first half and then another one for the second half. You need to click that link and download it immediately because otherwise it disappears. But it's going to give you a list of all of your connections, first name, last name, current job title, current company, and date you connected. So you could cross-match that with your customer relationship management system and make sure that all of your clients are connected with you on LinkedIn and vice versa. All of your LinkedIn connections are in your database, um, and that can be a really good sales strategy. The other thing that I recommend that you do before you make any significant changes to your LinkedIn profile is visit your own profile, click the More button, and choose Save to PDF. Now, it doesn't keep a record of everything on your LinkedIn profile, but it does keep a reasonable amount. And when you save it, I recommend that you save it with today's date back to front so that you, whoops, it's the tenth today. And then you put in your name. And I put dashes in file names because I build websites and you want every single word to be found by the search robots. Um, and LinkedIn dash profile. It also means that if I search for this file on my device, I'll be able to find it and I'll know that this is what my LinkedIn profile looked like on that particular day. Now, you can actually do this on anyone's LinkedIn profile. So if you go and visit someone else and you really like what they've written, you can save it to PDF and borrow a few ideas off of their LinkedIn profile as well. Please do not print mine. It's way too long. Uh, but yeah, that's, um, that's what I do with all of my clients before we start working together so that we've got that back up. And of course, after you've made the changes, save it to PDF. Your headline is one of the most important areas of your profile. I'll come back to that. You need to pop your achievements in. There's lots of links in the slides so that you can go through and do this manually. And um, these are the most important section, sections, your headline, your current job title, your past job title, and the keywords need to be in as many other sections in, as possible, including the education section. So most qualified people in the real estate industry will have completed some sort of certificate in property. And you need to include all the subjects that were in that qualification because they're all great keywords and ask for both recommendations, written recommendations, and endorsements, which are just the votes, real estate, commercial property, SaaS platform, whatever it is. Now, this you all need to do, and I'm going to ask you to do this now, and then you can copy paste your new link into the chat so that anybody else who'd like to connect with you can do so. So I'll show you how to do this. When you have a LinkedIn profile, your URL is what's up the top of the screen here. And what you need to do is at the moment, it is possibly your first name, dash, last name, and a whole bunch of numbers and letters. We need to change that. When we change it, it is going to optimize your name in Google search results and be much better for you, look much nicer on your email signature, on your business card, on your correspondence, on your resume, whatever. So you go over here to edit public profile and URL. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see this little pen and you change it. Now, this is the gold standard. So if you can just get your first name and last name and save it and it's available, woohoo, that's fantastic. If it's not available, you can try putting in a dash in there. You can try putting in a number on the end. And normally eight's pretty safe and it's lucky in some cultures. Um, if that's not available, you could put your post nominals. Um, you could put your middle name, like dash J dash. I mean, you know, whatever suits, but you just need to make it unique and save it and hopefully it's available. So if you've been able to do that, um, then go back and visit your profile and copy paste the link and pop it in the chat if you would like to connect with the other people who are here on this event. Whilst you're on this screen, you can also make sure that your profile photo is visible and that all the other sections of your LinkedIn profile are visible as well. And if this is helpful, put in a big why in the chat uh, because these are really important things that you need to change on your LinkedIn profile. And so I hope you get an opportunity to do it immediately. Okay, now as I said, your headline is the most important field on your LinkedIn profile. Now, lots of LinkedIn trainers will have different beliefs on how you should write it. 
This is my version of events, and I'll explain why. Uh, first of all, I start off with a label, independent LinkedIn specialist. You can see that there. And the reason I do that is if I appear in the news feed, that's the main word that you're going to see on a regular basis. So if I was still in real estate, I would have said, uh, you know, real estate, uh, Camberwell uh, real estate specialist or something or another, you know, sales, uh, Camberwell's uh, real estate sales specialist or something like that. So that every time people would see that would be, you know, see me in the news feed, they would be reminded that's what I'm about. Then after that, we pop in any number of keywords that you want to be found for. So I could mention other suburbs or I could mention property management or other things. And then I finish it off with something about me personally. Now I'm very proud of the fact I'm 57 years of age, but some people assume that once you're over 50, you're out of it. And I want people to know that I'm alive and kicking. So I put in there that I'm a dancer. I have actually appeared in LinkedIn search results for dancer. Fortunately, nobody's made inquiries about my dancing because I definitely wouldn't be paid for it. Uh, but there, oh, we've got some, oh, Vincent's got a big smiley face in there. I hope you've been able to change it. Mike's link is still the same. Okay, see if you can change your link, Mike, and, and get the new link into the chat for us. Um, by the way, even if you've been using the old LinkedIn URL to send people to your profile, if you update the URL link, it will still work and people will still get there. And we've got Julie in the chat as well. Thank you, Julie. Now, so the headline. Now, your photograph. I like to have your hair at the top of the circle, your eyes on the one third line, and for you to be wearing a high neck garment so that it frames the face, looking at the camera, smiling with your teeth showing. Um, a lot of real estate photos, they have greenery or buildings in the background, something like that. You can have a sign in the background. That's all fine. But please just make sure that when people look at that image and they'll spend up to 65% of their time looking at the image, um, we want them to see your face because that's what people do business with. I was working, I, I met somebody at an event last week of the Melbourne Press Club and you look at his photo and all you can see is his tie, like because he's a long distance shot. The main thing that you look at when you see his picture is his tie. And obviously, in a very small news feed photo, I'm not going to see his face at all. And we need to see faces to trust people. So keep that in mind. Um, so I've done a sample one here of a reliable residential property manager. And then the keywords could be apartments, units, houses in Campbell, Hall, and Glenaris, Melbourne, helping tenants and landlords, real estate management. So there's some worth. And you could put in runner. An emoji. I mean, this is just, you know, a fictitious one, but think about it. If you want some more help, keywords, where you can find them is via that link and, you know, primary and secondary keywords as well. So uh, check those out if that's going to be helpful to you. Now, your mobile phone. I mean, what real estate agent can live without a mobile phone? <laughs> and, and sometimes two or three mobile phones, which is even worse. So, only on the LinkedIn app on your mobile device can you add a video behind your face. So you can record it on your phone and you can add it behind your face. So most people's LinkedIn profiles do not have a video there. Mine's a terrible video that I shot just here in my office late one night, but um, I will be updating it. You can also add an audio pronunciation of your name, which is really helpful. And um, up until recently, you could add this extra link in. So some of us have that legacy link and some of us don't. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, LinkedIn is always changing things and, yeah, interesting. Um, and in this open to box, you can have open to work and not have that visible to everybody. But you can also add in this section called providing services. So if you're a bit of a freelancer in some other areas, it's a really good idea to put in the, fill in this section as well. That you don't need the mobile phone for, but, yeah, it's all on the same screen. So I've just sort of mentioned that there as well. Thank you, Pauline. Cool tip. Great to hear from you. As I said, don't forget to ask any questions. Now, obviously, I'm not going to read this one out for you. We'll be here till, you know, tomorrow. But there are heaps of different people that you can connect with on LinkedIn. And if you're a good real estate agent, you need to do your research 
And one of the things that you can do is if you're not connected to many people, the number of results that you'll get from a search on LinkedIn is somewhat limited. So you can do a Google advanced search and I'll show you that shortly. You can also become a member of a professional association. So most practicing people in the industry will need to be a member of their local Australian Real Estate Institute, or if you're overseas, there might be some other professional body that you need to be a part of. Now you can add that in the licenses and certification section of your profile. You can also add it in the organization section. If you have a profile on that association website, you can also add it in the contact info section. So when you look at me and my contact info, you'll see my link to the Career Development Association of Australia profile page. And you can also add your post nominals where your name is. So some people coming from some countries really value the fact that you have formal qualifications or memberships. So you can, you'll see my name is Sue Elson and then B, B U S M P C P C D A A. you know, all those memberships are, are listed and qualifications as well. Now, a lot of you will think, oh my goodness, it's social media and I've got to post, post, post. And Gary Vaynerchuk says you should post on social media seven to 15 times a day. Well, I do not recommend that, particularly not in Australia. I recommend once a week and the rest of the time spend engaging with people's content because the algorithms are assessing your behavior. And if they see that you're always speaking and not listening, then your content will not go as far. So I'd rather you like your client stuff, like your suppliers, your referrals, all of their information, and then once a week put something out yourself. That's a much better way to do it. You can also curate content by finding something useful and sharing it with your audience. And then you can also create. Now, when you click on start a post, you'll get this next screen with three dots. And then you can choose all these other options as well for things that you can change on and do and share on your LinkedIn profile. And there's some more strategies via that link. Now, you can also, obviously, if you're working for an organization, mention them on your LinkedIn profile, choose them from the drop down box and make sure their logo appears on your LinkedIn profile. But you may also choose if you're doing some private consulting to create your own company page. Now, when these first came out, a lot of LinkedIn trainers poo pooed the idea because they thought, what's the point of having a company page with one employee? Well, the good news is I've got, I don't know, hundreds of followers now, 700, I think. And also what I love about company pages is it keeps a record of everything you've done in the one spot. So it's another great way. If you don't want to go to the extent of having your own website, you can have your own company page and post everything you share in your personal profile on your company page, and that will be really good. You can also add in this lead generation form and people can click on that and take out some action as well. And if you want to learn more about company pages, you can do that via that link. You can also adjust some settings. So I'll show you these live so that you can see them. The first one in settings, so we just go from that me menu to settings is account preferences. And I normally turn off autoplay videos to reduce the amount of data that you're using when you're out and about. And I also recommend that you change this people also viewed profile. Because the last thing you want is somebody to find you and say people who looked at you also looked at all these other people, your competitors. So you would only turn that one on late at night when uh, you want to see who your competitors are. You would under your sign-in and security, you would make sure you add in all your email addresses, current past email addresses, so that anybody who knew you via that old email address would still come through to this LinkedIn account. You might not be able to verify the old email address, but if you've been somewhere for 20 years and then move, everybody knows you via that old email address. And if they sync their LinkedIn account with their email contacts or their phone contacts, they may not find you. So this is why you want to add all your email addresses to your account. Here under visibility, let's say you're doing some prospecting and you want to check someone out, but you don't want them to know that you've looked at their profile. So what you can do is you can turn on private mode, then go and check them out. 
and they will never know, even if they have a premium account, that you've checked them out. And then you can come back in here and turn yourself on. So on the free account, you can see the last five people who looked at you. I call that reverse stalking. It's my favorite activity to do on LinkedIn because it means I can see if my profile is working, if I'm maintaining relationships with my connections, et cetera, et cetera. But if you need to look at somebody privately, you can do that. Uh, I've already shown you the data privacy one, uh, but you can also change a lot of other settings, including your notifications. So if you start getting active on LinkedIn, you might find yourself inundated with connection requests and emails saying, Mary wants to connect with you, Bob wants to connect with you, Joan wants to connect with you, all these people, it's too much. So you can change your settings in the notifications so that you only get email notifications you know, for very important things and everything else just comes to you within the platform. So please, they're just some basic ones, but when you've got a nice stiff cup of coffee and you're bright and wide awake, you might want to check all of those settings and decide what you would like to have. Also, if you decide to take six months off and go, you know, hiking in Patagonia, uh, then you can hibernate your profile and nobody will see you at all. There is no need to delete your LinkedIn profile. You can just hibernate for a period of time. And if you want to know more about LinkedIn for creators, you can check out that link. And also your stats. So a lot of you will be in sales and you'll need to prove that you're to your upline manager, that you are connecting with people, that you are creating relationships, that you are doing all the good deeds that you need to do. So I have a statistics spreadsheet that I will send to everybody who's registered or you can go via the latest offer. But this um, social sales index is something that you can find just by going to linkedin.com slash sales slash SSI. When you're signed in, you just go to that link. And I never bother looking at this because all I want is results. I'm not worried about whether LinkedIn thinks it's good. But apparently, I'm in the top 1% of people in my industry. I'm in the top 1% of people in my network. My social selling index is 79 out of 100. I'm 37 out of 100 overall for sales professionals. Well, I'm not even a sales professional, so I don't know why they put that one in. But, you know, these statistics might be of some interest to you, but would I swear by them hand on heart and say this is what you've got to achieve? Absolutely not, but it's kind of a nice, interesting little number to have a look at. So I'll just take a breath. Anybody got any questions? And you feel free to unmute if you'd like to ask it directly or pop it in the chat. No? All right, we shall keep on going. So top 10 ways to use LinkedIn. So I've already talked about engagement ratio, but when you engage, you don't just have to do a like, you can do a celebrate, care and support, love it, insightful, and there's even a humorous one now. Um, oh, good question, Julie. I'm dying to, I'm doing LinkedIn Lives and want to get more engagement. To be honest, Julie, I don't see LinkedIn Lives as the best form of video tech. So for a start, you've got to use additional tools to be able to run a LinkedIn Live. And if somebody's been to a LinkedIn Live in the past, they may be notified about your current LinkedIn Live. And yes, you can still broadcast it to your YouTube channel and so on. But I'm much more someone who likes to put out content and then have a permanent digital asset as well. So that's why I prefer to just put on a video and all the videos that I produce, I also put on YouTube. And I'm now starting to produce short form content videos that I shoot in portrait mode. And I put them on LinkedIn, Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, TikTok, um, and they go automatically on YouTube as a short because they're less than 60 seconds and they're shot in portrait mode. I either do it straight on my phone or I do it using Zoom with my phone as the screen. So I have found them to be much more valuable. Like many things on LinkedIn, when LinkedIn Lives first came out, they went off like rockets. And as most things do, over time, they wane in influence. So I put up a video of my first television appearance and just in the news feed, and it ended up with something like 23,000 views. 
and I'm doing all the things right by uploading the video directly and not linking to YouTube and not uh, linking to anything else, all that kind of stuff. And my latest video has only got 1,500 views. So now that the AI is coming into LinkedIn, uh, it's changing the dynamics again. So, yeah, I don't know. Do you want to make a verbal comment there, Julie? Is that helpful to you? The only thing I can suggest is just keep um, promoting it outside of that and get other people you know to come on board. Um, the Oh, thanks, Mike. Um, see you next time. Uh, TikTok, uh, <laughs> look, I'm a reluctant player in that space because it's uh, very addictive when you get into that platform and I've just chosen to post the same content on each platform because I am a more generalist type of person rather than one who would have a specific audience on TikTok. I think the reason a lot of people go to TikTok is for entertainment and sadly it can be anywhere, you know, up to 43 hours a month people are spending on TikTok apparently at the moment and a mortgage broker posts lots of stuff about loans and property. Okay, look, it depends. I mean, that person could be getting a lot of views, but are they getting any sales? And at the end of the day, we've got to be very, very careful with uh, platforms about whether we're just getting vanity results and lots of engagement or whether we are actually getting sales. So keep that in mind. Now, Claire's asked the question, does TikTok have security issues? If you are online now, all of the platforms are collecting an enormous amount of data on you. When you use Google, they want you to sign in. And if you've got a Gmail account, you're automatically signed in. So they're tracking everything you're doing. They've even got it now that if you use the Google Chrome browser, they're remembering all your passwords for you as well. So just think about how dangerous that is. Um, so Claire, to be honest, I don't trust any platform. I assume that by having a phone, if I do not want to be traced, I have to leave my phone at home and go out without my device. Um, that's the only way you can avoid having this information. And, yeah, anybody who thinks that Facebook hasn't been doing this for ages, I don't know. Uh, but I do know a person who advises the government on cybersecurity issues, and believe it or not, they don't even trust Zoom. So they wouldn't use Zoom for calls. So, yeah, hard to say. Uh, providing info, yeah, true, Claire. Um, the information that's going on TikTok is going to the Chinese government, but how do we know that the Google information isn't being shared with government people as well? Like, how can we prove any of these things? Um, so, yeah, if, if, and also just think if your audience is on there and you feel comfortable with the security risk, then you can consider it. If you don't feel comfortable with the security risk, then just don't go there. That, that would be my advice. Now, this link here is very important for you. Where can you find warm leads on LinkedIn? So rather than trying to cold call people, I mean, who even likes doing that anymore? It is much easier to reach out to people who've already engaged with your content. Uh, sales are very important on TikTok. It's more of growing your TikTok organically engagement. There isn't much sales much here. Very true, I found. And also... What's really interesting with social media platforms now is that people are doing searches within TikTok rather than going back to Google or Bing to find information. So if you don't have a presence there, you might never be seen because they're not even going to Google or any other platform anymore. Uh, Pauline says you can also use an old phone and just have the TikTok and use Wi-Fi with no data. Yeah, look, there are lots of ways to try and be more security and privacy conscious. Um, to be honest, there's so much facial recognition now when you go out. Um, I've heard from the police that if you're at an event and using your camera, they have the tech that can see what you are filming. Like, you know, it's just all sorts of incredible stuff out there. So I don't want to alarm any of you. We've just got to do things to the level we feel comfortable with and try and be um, understanding of that. Short and entertaining. On TikTok, yes. If you have a video on TikTok that people watch for between 15 and 45 seconds, there's a very good chance it can go viral. But if you don't get to that 15 seconds, yeah, it might not go anywhere. 
So other ways, well, we've gone off to TikTok. How interesting for a LinkedIn webinar. Um, search for people, content and companies. As I said, you can do searches on LinkedIn. So if I was looking for a heart surgeon in Melbourne or whatever, I could just type in heart surgeon. And as soon as I press search, it then gives me all these extra filters that I can use, which is fantastic. And if you've already got a lot of connections, this is a great way to find people. But if you don't have a lot of connections, you can do a Google advanced search. You can do heart sur surgeon and Melbourne. That's a Boolean search because I've put it in quotation marks and I've used the word and. And then I can type in linkedin.com, the website, and Google will search the entire LinkedIn database. So it won't just search who you're connected to and your second level connections, it will search the whole thing. So this is a really great way to find people and consider inviting them to join your network or follow you or engage with you in some way. So definitely encourage you to use that. Now, as I said before, lots of different things you can do on LinkedIn and there's lots of different strategies. I love events because you can invite 1,000 people per week on from your LinkedIn network to an event. However, I would say that it is best to have free events because if it's a ticketed item, people will register, they won't buy the ticket and it will all be for naught. So put your events up at least a month before you plan to run them. So going back to that question before about a LinkedIn live video, if you're going to be doing it, you have a month's notice, you can create a LinkedIn event, you can invite your thousand connections per week, uh, then you've still got to send them the calendar reminder, the email reminder, all of those other things. But the benefit of running the events from your company page is that if people look at your company page, they'll be able to see the previous events that you've run. Um, you can now upload videos and it will do an automatic transcription, which is exciting. If you put the video on YouTube first, you can upload your edited subtitles with, if you download an SRT file from YouTube. And so then the captions will be correct and you'll have captions on YouTube and you'll have captions on LinkedIn. You can also save a PowerPoint presentation as a PDF just in PowerPoint. You don't need a special program to do that. And you can create a carousel of slides. So it looks like a little slideshow that people can press the arrow on. And that's an alternative to doing video if you're not up for video. And there's some other links there as well. Um, I do recommend that you update your profile at least once a year, put in your experience and voluntary experience, click on the notification bell if there's somebody you really like and you want to see their content more frequently and keep an eye on your analytics. I copy pasted this in here today. Um, I've had 1,259 profile viewers in the last 90 days and 873 search appearances in the last seven days. These numbers need to be over 100 here and over 50 here. And if they are not, um, then you could improve your LinkedIn profile. Now, adding connections. This is really important. As I said before, you're all gonna be out there carrying your mobile phone around with you and you need to go to the LinkedIn app on your mobile phone. So if you wanna do open that LinkedIn app right now, when you open it, there is a search box in the top of the screen. And I just want you to press in that gray box and then you will see these little dots on the side here. So just click on those dots and that will bring up your QR code. So when you're face-to-face -face with another person, you will ask them to press the scan on their device and enable the camera and it will go to your settings and you've just got to turn on the camera. And then when you go back to LinkedIn, you will be able to scan or they will be able to scan your QR code. Now, when your QR code appears on their screen, there'll be a big blue button, which will either say connect or follow. You do not press the blue button. You press the three dots next to it. And the three dots will give you an option to choose personalised invite. So you personalise invite, say, nice to meet you at this event and you're good to go. So... To show you how that looks like, press here, press the dots, get them to turn on the camera access and then get them to scan it, press the three dots, personalise invite, type in the message and then send it off. Now, this is really good if you're meeting several people at a networking event 
and you will then be able to, you know, like I was, um, uh, you can't see it. And you need to be on the LinkedIn app on your mobile phone. Uh, if you can't see it, you may need to update the app, but you need to press in the search box first and then you need to press on those little cues on the right-hand side um, to get there. Um, if you can't, just give me a hoy later and we'll do that. Now, the next thing is you never achieve results unless you set goals. So this is my providing services page. I popped down a photo on there. Um, you might want to, as I said, put that in. You might want to increase your number of connections by 10% a month for the next three months, like whatever it is. Uh, but if it's measurable and you can set those goals and achieve them, well done. You may also need to abide by the social media policy of the organisation you work for. Now, many people have never even seen a social media policy, so you might like to ask if there is one. And I've also got some links here on what to do before you quit your job or before you sack someone, because um, I've got some fairly strong views on, on being nice on that process. You can also write articles. Now, these are not the sexiest thing to do on LinkedIn anymore, but they stay in Google search results forever. So I wrote one LinkedIn for authors. And if you Google LinkedIn for authors, my article comes up, you know, many years after I wrote it. Uh, you still need to keep a copy of anything you write. But um, yeah, it's a good technique. Also, if you're thinking about paying for ads on LinkedIn or any other social media platform, please read this first because you should use all of the free resources before you just throw money at ads because if you're not using the platform properly first, the ads will not guarantee you success. And I do not understand why people have a $5,000 budget for ads and no budget for educating themselves. Like, are you crazy? Why don't you educate yourself, find the best techniques to use and use those and see what works and then use the ads to augment your processes. Much better way to do it. And you're not just filling up the coffers of some large corporate. Um, you'll be you're getting some, you know, one-on-one -on -one support and advice. Now, this is a little bit outside the scope of this event, but if you are, and there was a lot of people here that are advisors, the only thing you own online is your own website. So just remember that. But your website will not rank unless you are active on social media, you have reviews, you've got listings, and you've got links. So you need all of this to be part of your online presence. And of all the social media platforms, LinkedIn is the one that I suggest every individual needs to have, regardless of whether they work for an organization or for themselves. I also recommend Google Business, which is now Google Maps. Um, and you do need to have reviews because most people will Google your name and the word reviews or the business name and the word reviews. And if nothing comes up, um, that doesn't help you either. Consistency is key. As I said before, once a week. And remember to engage. You cannot automate anything. So I know there are lots of people say you should get a virtual assistant in some foreign country and pay them $6 an hour and everything will be great. Well, unfortunately, that is against the LinkedIn user agreement. And if they can identify that somebody is using your account from a foreign country, they can delete your account without warning. So you can systemize things, but if you are going to outsource anything, I suggest you do it to somebody who lives very close to you and you can liaise with on a regular basis because, um, yeah, you can systemize things, you can streamline things, you can have little pro formas set up, but you are not allowed to get somebody else to behave on your behalf. The good news is you can create administrators for your company page and they could be in foreign locations, but for your personal profile, it needs to be you doing the work. If you'd like to keep learning here in Australia, if you've got a library card or you are a student, you can get free access to LinkedIn Learning, or if you have a premium account, you can also do that. So how can you do everything in 20 minutes a week? Well, you would log on and engage with the news feed. You would check your notifications maybe connect with a few people, visit and engage with the content of your favourite people. You might want to have some bookmarks set up in your internet browser so that you keep on top of the most important people in your network. Edit or update your own profile, pop something into the news feed and check out your stats and you're good to go back to what you should be doing. Um, 
Claire's asked, do you have any recommendations about getting more professional posts to your feed rather than the ones which are people's pets and children? LinkedIn's another Facebook. <laughs> okay, Claire. Um, on the LinkedIn news feed, you can say there's three dots and you can say you don't want to see this sort of stuff anymore. The problem is that if you have actually stopped moving the mouse and have paused over that cute picture, then the LinkedIn algorithm assumes that that's what you're interested in. So if there are other people you would like to hear from, what you can do is you can visit their profile so I don't know, let's have a look at somebody who's looked at me today. So uh, let's have a look here. I know AJ, right. He's, he's a LinkedIn guru for ads. So if you do want to do ads, go and see this guy, right? And if you want to learn more about LinkedIn ads, all you have to do is click on the notification bell, and then his content is much more likely to appear in your news feed. You can also do this for company pages. So here's his company page. And again, what I could do is there should be, if I follow it, I can then click this notification bell and be notified of everything that he sends out. Um, and that's another way to curate your news feed. Great question. All right. Uh, I want to wrap up close to one and answer any more questions. So still time to ask if you have one. Uh, please choose at least three things to do from today. So whether that's download your data, save your profile to PDF and change your URL. You've got some value out of this webinar. However, you might want to follow up on warm leads. You might want to fill in more details. You might want to stalk my LinkedIn profile for three days and borrow ideas. All of these things are great. But if you don't do it within three hours or three days from now, you probably won't do it at all. So I'm encouraging you, if you possibly can, uh, do that. Yes, Julie, you will receive the recording and it will also be on my YouTube channel later today, my Sue Elson one. I'm running a live event on Saturday the 20th of May for four hours here in Melbourne. There's only two spots left as two people have already booked in. Um, it's here in my home. It will be nice and quiet and private and uh, collaborative. It's only $195 and it includes a copy of my book. Uh, as I said before, you are welcome to check out any of the previous webinars that I've run. And you can also, as I've just popped in the chat, uh, follow me on social media. Everybody who's turned up today, I will send them these files and uh, yeah, keep up to date. These numbers were recorded yesterday. Every webinar I've run in the series, I've put these numbers in so you can see how the numbers have grown over time. Claire said, thanks very much for a really useful session, Sue. Thank you, Claire. Uh, don't forget, I've got five books. Uh, they all pack in an enormous amount of information. Um, this one was a finalist in the Australian Career Book Award. This one is uh, been entered in this year's Australian Career Book Award. Uh, thank you, Melissa. Um, so ways to say thank you. You can write a Google review, a Facebook review, please. I would love to get at least one Facebook review from the last event in this series. Um, if you want to do the Google review, you can just scan that QR code and you can follow my socials via that link. Mark said, great passion and energy, incredibly grateful, very timely and appropriate. I hope everyone got out of it as much as I did. Kind regards, Mark. Thank you, Mark. That's really lovely feedback. I really appreciate that as well. So uh, I will finish off the screen sharing and we'll just see you on screen instead. Uh, great value, yes, particularly since it was free, Vincent. <laughs> Anything, any, if you managed to stay till the end, I mean, you've, you've definitely got some value out of that. So nice to see you clapping hands, yeah, pretty good value. Look, I the reason I love running free events is the people who turn up want to learn, you know, and that's the people I like to help. So uh, kudos for you for turning up and even more kudos for staying uh, the whole duration as well. Uh, now, if you want to unmute and make another comment or ask a question, uh, please feel free to do so or say something, Vincent. Yeah, um, thank you, Sue, for valuable, you know, a bit of scratching the surface, obviously. Uh, love to come back to attend some other talks yes. that you have in the future. So thank you so much. I have to go. 
Oh, no worries. Okay, thanks. Nice to see you. And uh, yeah, good to see a local business here too. So thank you. And Pauline, you're on camera. Did you have something you'd like to add? Or I, I just thought that was awesome. I, uh, I've been a long time user of LinkedIn. I didn't know anything about the, the SSI that you were referring to. So I'm in the top 1%. I'm like excited. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I really have kind of ignored it for the last two years. But yes, <laughs> I will. I will be much better at it. So yeah, there's there's some great tips in there. Thank you so much. It's uh, yes, you're it's, welcome. It's really powerful to get everything in you know one really concise uh, uh, you know presentation. So and you speak quickly, which I love. <laughs> Well, I think even faster. So that's the problem. You know, sometimes I think I'm talking too fast. Nobody's going to understand me, which is a good reason to record it because you can slow down the speed or you can watch it again or whatever. But the other thing is, Pauline, um, I finished my university studies in the year 2000. And when I finished my degree, I was encouraged to go straight to a master's. I didn't have to do postgrad because I already had some work experience. And then they said, you could do a PhD. And I thought, well, that's all very good, but I'm not going to apply anything I've learned if I just keep studying. Mm -hmm. But what I decided to do was to um, keep learning. So I've been going to between one and four events every week, my whole life since the year 2000, right? Yeah. So when you've been to as many events as I have, you get really critical of the people who say, well, today we're going to talk about and then we'll be talking about and that's in my book. And if you buy this program, you will be able to access. And it just drives me nuts. Like, yeah. I just think you've just wasted an hour of my life trying to sell me something and I can't stand it. So, yeah. um, but as I said at the beginning, the numbers have steadily declined of people who turn up to these webinars over time. So, for example, I had 113 or 14, I think, register via yeah. Eventbrite and LinkedIn. But, you know, here we are at the end with not so many. So the videos still get views, but the people don't view the video for the full length of time. So mm. as an educator, there's better ways for me to educate people. So that's why I think if I do the short form videos and I tell people exactly what they're looking for, yeah, that might be a better way in the future. But yeah, like you, I love long form content and I love it when the person provides value. And even if I hear the same old stuff, it's a good reinforcement. Yeah. But so long as I get something that I can use, I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. Well, I subscribe to you on YouTube. That's my main uh, platform. Oh, yes. So. <laughs> yeah, I pay I, for it on YouTube. I, I'm so grateful for YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, and I was going to say, do make sure you use playlists because that's the thing that annoys me when people do this sort of short form content. So then they have hundreds of videos and no playlists, and it's just like, please. <laughs> Yes, no, I quite agree. The challenge is with shorts. Um, I'm not sure how to put them in playlists yet. I'm not sure that that can happen. But anyway, I will check that out. But I do have a Sue Elson in the media playlist and a Sue Elson just everything yeah. playlist. Uh, so because obviously I'm on other channels as well. So it's not just my own YouTube channel. And if Anne's asked, where will this recording be? It'll be youtube.com slash at Sue Elson later today. Okay, so. It. So that will be there as well. But thank you for your feedback. It's great to hear from a, a like-minded person. So that's terrific. <laughs> I'm definitely a lifelong learner. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have I to be. I totally relate to that. <laughs> we have to be. And and look, it's, it's sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming, but whenever I stop learning, I feel like I've lost something and like what's happened? I'm, I'm, I'm feeling really old-fashioned. But I don't know how you feel about the fact that some of us have been able to understand the analog world as well as the digital world. Yeah. And I think we bring something really unique. So if we can bring our wisdom to the digital world, I think that we can be very powerful. And, and that's what I'd love to see is more uh, older workers um, Absolutely. And especially this. because it's moving so quickly, you know, with, I mean, chat GPT is just the start of it. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what happens with content from here on in, you know, whether, yeah. I mean, apparently Google's happy with chat GPT content, but I'd definitely still be running it through AI detectors and things of that nature. And, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you just got to provide value, right? 
You do. And the interesting thing is chat GPT for the most of us at the moment is using data up to 2021. So for those of us who've had a digital presence prior to that, you know, we, we've got some street cred. Yeah. But the people who are starting out now have got to start that and compete with all of that old stuff. I don't know how it's going to be. So I've written an article on Medium recently and I'm hoping that chat GPT just ends up or its versions of artificial intelligence and predictive text and natural language pro processing or whatever it's called. Um, I hope that what they do is they become tools, just like a spell checker, yeah. but that we remember that the most important thing is our relationships. Absolutely. Like that yeah. is how we are going to survive. So Dunbar's number suggests it's 150. So just as another quick example, I had over 4,700 contacts on my email list at the beginning of the week, and I've now got about 47. Wow. Because what I did was I emailed everybody, and obviously the email didn't reach everybody, but I had to yeah. pay for that privilege. Mm -hmm. And I told people that if they wanted to stay in touch, it's only a one announcement, um, they would have to subscribe. But what I'm hoping is that the subscribers I have now will be the people who genuinely want to receive my stuff. Yeah. And yeah. that makes me happy. So rather than the broad brush, I hope that what AI does is reminds us that we actually only need 150 people in our network to survive. And let's do that rather than thinking we can conquer the world. And let's maintain those relationships so that our 150 people feel connected um, yeah. and, and not isolated in this digital craziness. Definitely. And that's huge too. I, I do a lot of partnerships and I find that, you know, I can go after databases that are 40,000 strong, but if I find a handful that are 2,000, usually I'm getting better results, you know, because the people are much more engaged, the open rates are higher, the click-throughs are higher, everything's higher, you know. That's so right. It's, yeah. um, it's how someone nurtures their community that counts, not the number of people that they uh, that they have on their on their database. It's Or, yeah. or how many people, like I've got one video on YouTube that's had 32,000 views. Wow. And um, uh, YouTube tells me it's mostly young men in 25 to 30 in India. Like, how is that helpful to me? Like, yeah. that's my demographic. So, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's an interesting thing. And look, no issue. I'm happy to help anybody anywhere. That's, that's not the problem. Uh, but at the end of the day, I still need to eat. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to be a little bit practical as well. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> nice to chat. And you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pauline. Take care. You too. Any other questions before we wrap up? All right. Well, what I might do is I'll turn off the recording so that if anybody does have any other questions they'd like to ask without it being on the official recording, uh, that's well. So bye-bye uh, to everybody online.